Here for months. Scary, man. Got a tackle box. All right. Oh dear. Ooh. Right, YouTube's up. Stream on YouTube starting. I cannot find what I want. Bugger. I could sort it out one day. Yes. SVP's live, YouTube's live. Excellent stuff. We shall just stow the tackle box carefully. Hoop! Pretoing! Ah, I give up. They could be in that camera bag. Maybe. No, because I went through that. Looking for something else recently. Hey. Evening, everyone. Dave, you're on the telly. Hey. So I are. Ego Maniac said, he guards it's double Dave's. Move that over there. That'll be fine. It is, indeed. Have I got time to pour a beer? Yes. There's always time to pour a beer. Always. And Darren has said, does. I said, it's streaming like a streaming thing on a streaming day for him. Cool. And we're back on proper beer this week. Sav so says streaming is fine. What's audio like, Sav? Oh, yeah. We never tested audio, did we? Sounds all right to me, but... My CPU's going mental. Is it? Uh, Ninety-something percent, then. Ah, uh, you're using um, the screen grabby thing. I am. Yeah. Oh. Well, we'll see how that goes then. <laughs> yeah. Streaming's fine. Bombardier. Indeed. Or Bombardier. Bombardier. French for Bombardier. En français. Bombardier. En français. Oui. C'est vrai. Sav says audio is fine. Audio. She's just said fine audio. Brilliant. Which is just in, in the private chart, who knows? Yeah, that's it. Yes, one does, yes. Members only. Pardon? Uh, I'm not getting my member out. <laughs> bad Seed said, Bad Seed. Hey, bad, bad Seed, seed. Bad Seed, where you been? I've seen for donkeys. Looks and sounds spot on, he says. Coolio Double Glaziers. Dunker Shane. Now that's a proper beer. Or like last week's, where I poured it as carefully as I could and the damn thing overflowed for about half an hour. Do you remember? Oh, yes, the uh, the foreign stuff. Yes. Neil Roth apparently is on the Hooper's Strawberry and Elderflower tonight. Ugh! Man's drink. Sounds bloody horrible to me. One Dave is talking beer, the other is talking trains. Silking. VB, silking. Talking. The G on the end. That's the one. Talking, even. Ah, there you go. Uh, really? Pra practicing for China, apparently it's polite uh, to burp. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But not to fart. I spent hours today filling in forms for Chinese visas, would you believe? You land at, uh, land at, uh, at the airport. You want to buy e cig? <laughs> we got very good deal on e cig for you. Ah, uh, the amount of e-cig spam I'm getting these days. I mean, it's been, it's been bad for a while, hasn't it? But now it's just gone absolutely mental. I, I've got, what, about 20 different email accounts? And all of them get spam now. Yes. 
Now I'm trying to remember what it was that I said that Neil's just replied to, because it was so long ago. Mm -hmm. About strawberry and bilberry or something. Elderflower. <laughs> VB is going to have an Erdinger Weibier later. You think Voice she needs beer. it? Erdinger from... Silent, Silent has totally green video. Nice. I haven't got any video at all on my playback, I've just noticed. I'm going to refresh my page. There's an idea, Silent. Refresh. Pete Collins is swinging Calvados. Four and a half minutes, Dave. Erdinger Weiss beer. <laughs> Actually, ain't bad. It comes from Erding, you know. Really? Which is Eagle a suburb Maniac. of Munich. E Eagle Maniac has just said one of the vapors placed hosts thinks Dave is sexy. The question is, which Dave? It's got to be you, can't be me. I was going to say the same, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Blimey, that CPU's working hard. Green on YouTube? It's, it's lovely on YouTube, Silent. That is definitely a flash error. Update your flash player. Update your flash player, like. It's 2014, man. Is it? Oh, I saw it is. Even Sav said it sounds like a flash update issue. He's tried refreshing. Try the SVP stream, Silent. All right, you could do that. It's the same... Same quality output on both, so. Dunkey, Dunkey beer? Dunkel beer. Dunkel. That means dark. Oh. Leanna Lawless says, I agree. Dave's sexy. Again, she's not saying which one. It's got to be you. No. Can't be me. I'm reckoning that's you. Nah. It's the cigar or whatever it is that's in your gob that'll do it. That's one of these uh, desires by kick. Elliptical, don't you know? It looks like the ellipse that I was just trying to find. Well, it's not, because this is a, <laughs> this is a, a, dip, a disposable. It's disposable. Cool. Max Drum says HTML5 is the way. This is true. I couldn't argue. I couldn't argue. Win eight hits flash. That is also true. I hate Win8, and I'm not Flash. Dum, 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 dum. Castello says YouTube's looking good there. And we're at uh, one and a half minutes, Dave. Okie dokie, Mikey, baby. As they say. Or as Vivian said on the young ones once. Is that All right. right. Shall I put the bug up? Hooty cook. Of Dave's Tackle Box. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. It is a Sunday, the 4th of May. I had to check the calendar then. I've been filling forms in all day <laughs> and I still had to check the date. It's the 4th of May, 2014. Uh, on tonight's show, coming up tonight, uh, Dave Dawn, you can probably hear in the background. Hi, Dave. Hello, Dave. We'll be talking about travelling with these things because 
it's a subject that comes up a lot and uh, I sort of travel a fair bit and I've learned some stuff and I thought I would impart what I have learned and uh, we're also going to look at a couple of stories uh, one from the States and one from the state of Scotland uh, but all of that happens after the opening titles so see you in a minute We're back eventually. <laughs> I was too busy yakking then to notice the titles had finished, but I don't think they noticed, Dave. I think not. Got, I think we got away with it. Good. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm. 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 I'm well. Um, I'm well. Uh, for Star Wars, dear, is upon us. Yes, and may the fourth be with you too. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, what have you been up to? Um, sorting out various bits and bobs for what's coming up this week. Um, trip off to Switzerland to Basel. I know about that. Yes, and uh, prepping up for the Public Health England meeting on the 15th of this month in amongst some of the personal stuff that I've needed to get involved in and get sorted out. So yes, it's been quite a busy week. Yes, yes, I, I can imagine it has. Uh, so uh, you're in Switzerland on a Wednesday night. Wednesday, Thursday, fly black, fly, fly back men. Friday. Easy for you to see. Uh, <laughs> a couple of pints in, it'll get harder. I, uh, <laughs> I feel very sure on that. But uh, yes, so uh, I'm going to meet up with you in Basel on uh, Wednesday night because yes. I know this bar scene. It's actually a, a sort of German-themed bar in think. Basel. Uh, it's a, it's got its own brewery in the cellar. Ooh. And it makes like beer that's as good as Munich beer, and I know this because I've drunk it. It's called the Stubelfish or something. They serve the beer out of a jug that looks like a fish. Really? Yeah. Nice. And you can get good uh, traditional Bavarian cuisine. Can you get good old traditional Switzerland kaleid? You can get kaleid anywhere in Switzerland if you're right. rich enough. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a cheap place to get drunk, trust me. Okay. And uh, don't try bringing your own with you either. As uh, if. They're a little bit officious. But anyway, we're going to talk about travel in a little while, aren't we? Um, but Indeed. you said you said you got we got some newbies in chat. Yeah, I'm seeing names I've not seen before. Silver Bull, Scoot Alu, GW7KKP, CQDX, CQDX. Um <laughs> There's a, there's a whole host of people there I, I don't recognise and some old names that I haven't seen for donkey's ages like Bad Seed, it's all good. Hey, Welcome Derek. along, everybody. How are you doing, Derek? Hope all's well. Indeed. VB reckons that beer sounds fishy. It, 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 so do I. <laughs> well, I, I, I hope I can find this place. It's actually quite near your hotel but nowhere near the station I've worked out. So uh, one way or another we'll find it. Oh, you don't Anyway, Oops. on Apparently the subject... My cam then, keeps going out of focus every time I exhale any vapour. I noticed that. I noticed <laughs> that. But, like, does it need to be in focus if all you can see is a cloud of vapour anyway? Probably not, no. So it's not that big a deal for me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so to segue beautifully into our first piece tonight, which is the subject of travelling to Basel or other places, um, we thought we'd look 
and I'll explain a bit. I'll look at the camera and I'll explain a bit. Uh, as you know, uh, I'm a moderator on UK Vapors, and this is a perennial question. It comes around often on uh, UK Vapors, and I'm sure other forums too. Uh, I get lots of emails about it. I get lots of PMs, and people are always asking the question, I'm going on holiday in June. That's just an example, like they don't all say June. Uh, I'm going to such and such a place. How will I be for taking my e-cigs with me? What can I take on the plane? Will the airport let me vape? Will the airline let me vape? People say things like, Ryanair sell e-cigs on the plane, don't they, Dave? Yeah, but they don't. But they don't. Some of these things are true. Some of these things are easy to answer, and some are not so easy to answer. So we thought we'd uh, devote a little time to it tonight, didn't we? It's not a good. It's not a bad idea. And and just to say, Dave, I'm travelling to Switzerland via British Airways um, on Wednesday morning, and and I'm not entirely certain what I can take on the plane. Can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> if I hadn't a laugh, then that could have been like a proper phone in TV show, couldn't it? It could. We have. could have had a little graphic, a uh, faked a letter or something like that. <laughs> Quite right. right. Okay. So yes, I do. I go through airports just about every week even when i'm on holiday i'm normally going through an airport once or twice a fortnight so uh i've 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 probably taken vaping gear on i don't know maybe 300 flights or more so far uh that that said it tends to be through specific airports like they all the journey nearly always starts in birmingham and ends in birmingham for example um so i the first piece of advice i would give to anybody is if you are unsure of what the airline will allow, i.e. can you vape on the plane, contact them. Uh, or just don't let them know you're vaping on the plane. Uh, I, I, I've long been of the opinion that if I ask the cabin crew, they will say, don't do it. Uh, some airlines I know of do have actually have policies. I flew with uh, Malaysia uh, Airlines. Uh, on my holiday last year and in the little uh, sort of no smoking announcement that they do over the tunnel is part of the safety features then you had DC belt up here's the oxygen mask they said no smoking no smoking in the toilets and that includes electronic cigarettes they were very very specific we know don't we Dave that Aer Lingus also state that you can't use an e-cig on the plane they do uh, except that I flew with one of their subsidiaries and they didn't mention it at all. Aaron, Air Aaron. It could well have been. The subsidiary to Cunny, uh, Air Lingus. Um, <laughs> they, uh, yes. All I um, know is it had a green clover on the side and it took me to Dublin. Yes, that was exactly what For I Irish mean. Vape Fest. But the thing is, on that, on that flight, my wife and I were there. And it was... Um, it's a good flight. And, and that is, I think, the best advice you can give. If you really want to know whether it's allowed or not, ask. If you actually don't really want to know whether it's allowed or not, don't draw attention to yourself. It's very simple and easy to do. Now, even I catch a very small plane every week, and like it's one of the, those where you're actually touching the guy sitting next to you, and nobody's ever spotted me vaping in hundreds of flights, literally. So it you know, just takes a little bit of care. Do you uh, often touch the guy sitting next to you, Dave? You have no choice. Isn't that a bit personal? Uh, it's far more personal than I'd like it to be, if I'm honest. True. But, uh, you know, I ain't stumping up for business class. <laughs> I'm too bloody tight for that, mate. <laughs> Cheapy seat, please. Yes. So, um, yeah, so, so that, uh, I know that some airports actively publicise that e-cigs are fine. Yes. And uh, some airports, like the one you're flying through uh, on Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday, whenever it is. Wednesday morning, Wednesday it might as well morning, be Tuesday Heathrow, by the time we're leaving, yes. Has got this um, vaping lounge, hasn't it? In one it of the has. tunnels. In ter Terminal 5. I, if I, I'm very quick between planes, apparently an hour and 55. I, I don't know, I, never having been to Terminal 5, because that's way after my time. I've, I'll find out when I get there how long I've got, and if I can find 20 minutes, I'll, I'll shoot a bit of uh, bit of video. There you go. And I know uh, I've read on UK Vapors that uh, people have been flying uh, through Gatwick and asked if it's okay to use them, and they've been told, yeah, knock yourself out, carry on, not a problem. 
Um, same in same in Newcastle. Um, I I've been sat in Newcastle working with something similar to this, and giving it hot licks, and nobody says boo to a goose. There There's go. quite a few people come up and say, "Where can I get one of them?" <laughs> There you go. So uh, it varies on that. But one thing that shouldn't vary is what you're allowed to take through security. Now, the one th you know, it's th there's two issues about what you're allowed to carry with you. So using it's one thing, and you know, and I say uh, follow your instincts on whether you want to ask or do what you want to do. But what you're actually allowed to physically take through security with you should be the same throughout British airports and in my experience has been the same throughout uh, European airports and in fact was the same in a Malaysian airport uh, where electronic cigarettes are technically illegal they are but I st nobody stopped me nobody stopped me so I've got like this like little routine now I know I know what's technically allowed and what isn't but I've also learned I think at this stage what is likely to draw attention on what isn't. I also know what's going to leak in a pressurised cabin. <laughs> yes, so, there, there is much talk to, about aero tanks and uh, pro tanks and such. Yeah, uh, I, right. Now, I have not tried every device, obviously, but uh, they do seem to fall into a certain pattern. What you'll get away with and what you won't. And I'll start by saying any kind of tank, you're going to get some leakage. If air can get through, then juice can get through. Uh, the only thing that I've ever managed to use with, with no leaks whatsoever are small cartos. But if that leak is just a little bit into the cap or into the top of the battery, then all you need to do is carry a piece of tissue with you or at the top of the battery and away you go. But I've also noticed that they perform differently in pressurised cabins as well. But we'll get into that. Um, so... Dave, what did you want to take with you on your trip to Basel? Well, given that I'm going to be standing in front of 500 uh, harm reduction experts, um, I want to take a, a reasonable selection. So I'm thinking the Squip, the TNS and Poldiac is definitely going, uh, two or three Generation 2 devices, and possibly a Genesis of some description. And I'm already well aware the Genesis will need to be drained before it goes. Uh, yeah, I found that even if you do drain it, you'll find it wasn't as drained as you thought. <laughs> so I'd also stick it in one of those little sealable placky bags. Indeed, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, Unless I'll you're probably... going to strip it and obviously I'm, remove I'm, any juice. I'll, I'll strip it and clean it and rebuild it and check it and that'll be that. Right. OK, so let's get on to the subject of things like... Now, you're not taking... Uh, you're not checking any luggage in, am I right? No, I'm hand baggage only. Right. OK, so th there's, there's, there's been a lot of talk about lithium batteries and, uh, and whether they are allowed in the hold and how many you're allowed to carry onto the plane. Now, I'm going to tell you that I cannot find anything in the British airport codes that say you can't take lithium batteries. The American, uh, what, what do they call them? The, the uh, TSA. The TSA. They tell you, no, it's actually the Aviation Authority. Uh, the TSA is security, isn't it? It's, it's yes. actually, yeah, the, 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 uh, the, the Aviation Authority, and for some reason it slipped my mind. In the States, they actually impose a limit on the amount of lithium in batteries that you can check into the hold on the plane that's the faa yes the faa thank you very much dave uh we're the csa they're the faa that's right uh and the faa do impose a limit but the fact of the matter is that the uh, the sort of <laughs> the quantities of lithium they're talking about you'd need to put like bloody lot of batteries in there like dozens and dozens of 18650s to get near it so the technically isn't a band that i can see although if you ask you're advised to take them in your carry-on stuff but in yes. the in the UK, uh, I have I've even had my suitcase opened with eight eighteen six fifties in it. This was by the Munich security people. I checked it in to the hold, and I didn't know until I got home late that night. In fact, it was the following morning. I opened my suitcase, and there was a letter in there saying we've searched your bag, everything was fine. We haven't taken anything. So they weren't bothered by the fact that I that I had, that, that I'd uh, taken a load of lithium ion batteries onto the plane either so again i think if you don't want to take my word for that it's worth checking um but 
because I, t- I, t- I it's probably a good time to, to explain my philosophy right I know what is legally allowed and what isn't to take onto the plane and I'll, I'll go through some of that in a minute but I always work on the basis that if you meet a stroppy security guy and you're rushing for your plane and he's not going to let you uh, go through with your e-cig until you've been to see somebody argued the toss filled in a load of forms or something by which time you miss your flight I work on the basis that I don't actually take anything in my carry-on that I can't afford to lose and because sometimes you're flying away from home I make sure I've got whole vaping setups and replacements and chargers and batteries and everything I need in both my checked in luggage and my carry-on that way Okay, you could be unlucky and lose the lot. But the worst that can happen then is if they uh, nab everything off me. Or, or let, let's face it, if it just failed, got lost, nicked, confiscated, whatever, I've got back up as soon as I get my suitcase back. So, uh, so so that's the way I play it. So I can show you, Dave, if you're interested, what I carry on with me every Monday morning and every Thursday night. And I can do that by hopefully flicking this camera. Except uh, I spent so long nattering, the computer that uh, is controlling that <laughs> has gone to has sleep. Gone to sleep. <laughs> so I'll just ad lib for a second. Ad lib for a second, Dave. Dave, ad lib. While it finds the network again. Yes. Come on. Hey! All the buttons have lit up now. So now I can do that. Right? And move my mouse out of the way. So I've got this like little little green bag. It's a camera bag. Okay, now I can show you. It's just a little, little bag. There we go. That's what I carry on with me. It'd be smaller, but that little MacBook that you can see on the desk, that fits in there in the side pocket. I can get all my stuff that I carry on to the flight with me. And uh, in there, I have one bottle of juice. Uh, You're allowed... uh, no, no container can be bigger than 100 mil, they say, isn't it? That's what they say, yes. And that's a pretty standard thing uh, across all the European airports. Uh, this is a 20 mil bottle. I top it up uh, in the office before I fly home on a Thursday, and I'll be topping it up straight after the show tonight. It's got a filler nozzle on it. Uh, it don't leak. That's it. That's the juice. I've also got, like, couple of hundred mil of different juice including 45 mil stuff in my suitcase but that's fine you can take as much liquid as you want there but that's what i carry on with me on the basis i'm never more than a few hours from my suitcase that's fine i will also take this thing because sometimes you just fancy variable voltage don't you most of the time and uh, this is actually variable wattage as well this thing do you remember this thing that we got from vote first island yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's quite useful, that. It's a bit of a baseball bat, but it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. It's also a spare for whatever I've got in my pocket. Uh, and you go twist, because that's a spare for that. Because <laughs> you just can't be too careful. But um, if you any kind of like carry-on bag, I mean, that, that green bag I just showed you, is like, uh, it's like a camera bag. And in the side pocket, it's got these spaces for pens. So I just fill it full of Ego batteries. That's, that's basically what I do. And um, then uh, I'll always then have, and the computer's gone to sleep again, there we go. Uh, I will also then have a complete Ego setup. This thing's got an EVOD on it, but I'm going to talk about uh, EVODs. Because uh, I think I found something that performs a little bit better now. Um, that is all in my bag. And then, of course, I'll, I'll have something in my pocket that I'll be using stealthily as i walk around the airport and more often than not this these days that's something like this it's a it's just a 650 ego because you can lose it in your hand uh and it's got an aspire bdc on it at the moment but uh, a few weeks ago it was an evod it looked like that so there's there's just just to interrupt dave there's some chatter going on in chat that's a good place for chatter yeah it's it's brilliant uh lal said that um Smoke detectors don't detect vapor, and there's there's been some discussion about this. <laughs> Want Zalk. to bet? <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, they do. I they I can. attended a meet in a pub in South Wales at the beginning of 2013. I don't know if you recall. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, organised by Cybernoid, 
and Goatee. I don't even remember. I took my camera. I did a little VT on it. You did. And I was with Glenn uh, Romastino and a couple of other guys. And they were using, uh, what was it? It was one of those sort of quite authentic tobacco liquids that everybody raves about. El Toro or something. Rings and they were stood under the uh, smoke alarm. And trust me, they set the smoke alarm off. The manager came over, they started evacuating the place till they realised what had been done and then they asked us to stop vaping in there basically because we set the smoke alarm off. Well, they did. I didn't. So, yes. uh, in the right circumstances, you absolutely can set some smoke alarms off. It's um, it's not a good idea to, to test the smoke alarm in the bog on the plane. It really isn't. And it's not a good idea either to use something like vanilla custard in the bog on the plane because it stinks to high heaven and that it's is very, true. very easily easily found. If you are kicking out plumes of vapour, <laughs> uh, uh, then obviously you're not really vaping very stealthily at all. Uh, uh, but equally, if it leaves a pong, <laughs> then uh, that's not very stealthy either, frankly. Yes, so honeybees, no. Uh, <laughs> vanilla custard, no. <laughs> One more accessory that I ca carry on with me in my carry-on bag is this thing, which is an Ego Charger, because I also carry in my bag for a variety of reasons. Uh, I actually reviewed it. I'll reach it over from my bag. I actually... Uh, I did cover this uh, some time ago on Dave's Tackle Box. And if I just make this go full screen, this is... Uh, a power supply USB power supply it's a power brick uh, a 15,000 milliamp hour power brick with a 1 and a 2 amp USB output on it uh, so basically if I did the worst did happen and my flights kept getting cancelled and I was there for 12 hours or something I can recharge a 650 milliamp hour ego battery quite a lot with this 15,000 milliamp hours it does the job <laughs> <laughs> what are you giggling at? Uh, well, it would appear that, that, that what we were talking about, about pongy juices in the airline bog, <laughs> has finally got the chat. And uh, MG Jones 74, for it was him that says, a quick fart will cover the smell. <laughs> and somebody else said, a pong in the bog. Yeah, seriously, I'm not kidding you. That vanilla custard cuts through the very worst of, um, how can we put it, a curry induced dump. Which is ironic when you consider what it induces well quite <laughs> but uh yeah i'll just flash that one more time so that's basically what i take with me I'll have, that is my pocket normally in my hand frankly uh a little bit of juice some spare batteries spare carto and that's enough for my short flight and i, I took pretty much that uh to malaysia as well that was a 12 hour flight and uh, you can pretty much get through. You can recharge stuff. Um, and then, of course, in my suitcase, I had a whole load of other stuff as well. Yes. So uh, uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back and I'll show you what then I keep in my bag. And then we'll talk about what works and what doesn't really work, in my experience at least, on the plane itself. So we'll see you in a minute.
sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. And welcome back. Okay, yeah, right, so that's, I just showed you just before the break there what I take on in my carry-on. In my suitcase, I then take this. Let's uh, put that up on the screen. If I can do it. Ah. Wirecast was a little busy, then it had to wait. Oh dear. Ooh, 95%. Mm, interesting. Oh, matron. <laughs> I've no idea why. It's the same setup as I use. Anyway, um, this is, uh, <laughs> I think I won this in a raffle prize. You never win someday. raffles, do you? And it had in it some like little stubby uh, ego things, like really half size ego things, and cartos and stuff like that, which weren't that great. So I chucked them out. Um, and I just find it's a convenient sort of thing. I do like cram quite a lot of stuff into it, actually. This is what goes in my suitcase. First of all, a pen knife with some uh, tools for furking with if you need to. Because you always need that. Uh, ego charger. Uh, remember these? Good old fashioned cartomizers. Yeah, they're just like, uh, they uh, they could be dual coil. I've no idea what they are. But like that, a battery and some juice, and I can vape. It's that simple. Uh, to that end, I've got some uh, drip tips lying around in there as well. So there you go, they're 510Ds. So that and something like uh, that Ego C will give you a quite satisfactory vape in a push. So they don't take up much space. I had them lying around, I took them. Uh, these are like uh, the smock version of EVODs. And you can see I've used a few of those. That used to be a full packet. Somebody was asking about them earlier on. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, well, they perform the same way as EVODs, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I'm going to talk about those a little bit later. Um, spare coils for those things. I know, these are the coils for the EVODs and uh, smock tech things. Because there's no reason why you have to put up with a crap bait. Uh, I've got some kind of clearomizer in here. I have no idea what it is. It's like a CE4 kind of thing. Uh, which I picked up somewhere. I thought I might as well shove that in there. Loads of coils for different things. Spare tops for my little juice bottle. Uh, so basically, again, enough there to basically get myself vaping. Whatever happens. In addition to that stuff, I've also got an MVP uh, and its charging cable. And I, bought, I invested in one of these these world travel adapters, but instead of having like the 13 amp plug socket on the back of it, it's got um, uh, two USB outputs. Damn useful, you can charge your phone and an e-cig at the same time. Very handy, yes. Very handy, uh, as well. and and that you know, and then it, it plugs into just about any power outlet in the world. Yes, but, they uh, are very very handy. Um, there are people asking again, how how do we get all the liquids through? Where do you put all your liquids? Right. Do well, you take it? How do you take it through security? Do you show it in a clear bag, or just leave it in your bag for the scanner? Um, you take it out. Uh, yes. Uh, as you approach, it doesn't matter where that. Right. It, it follows the same rules as shampoo toothpaste, uh, any other kind of lubricant or gel that you might want to take in your bag. Lubricant? Uh, what would that be for? Well, you know, I've just been inclusive. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, basically the rules say it's got to be in a sealable, clear bag. Now, I've got a little story to tell because I've been doing this, like I say, several hundred flights. Um, this is well below the 100 mil. Normally, they don't bat an eyelid. They'll always ask you to remove your laptop and any liquids from your bag and put them separately. At Birmingham, they have one of these systems where you put everything in a tray. Uh, yes. Everything in a tray. Your coat, your bag, everything. Some places, they just have little trays for loose stuff like this. So I always put... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing how much of a routine it becomes. By the time I've arrived at security, I've always got my laptop, this, and my belt in my hands, and they go into the first tray and off it goes. 
This has never even drawn comment. Nobody has ever said what's in that bottle. No, no question until last Monday. The first time ever, and they still didn't ask me. The guy said uh, that what they do is uh, sometimes routinely, sometimes if they spot something on the scanner as it goes through the x-ray machine, they, they send the tray off to one side. And that really winds me up because, like, you know, you have the same crap in your bag every week. Sometimes they stop you, sometimes they don't. Uh, but you, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to wait. Uh, like, uh, you had to wait in a queue. The guy in front of me had got, like, a multi-tool. It was a very nice old leatherman, as it happens. Uh, and they said, he was saying, why can't I take it on? And they said, because it's a knife. <laughs> and uh, so they, while they were trying to do that, the guy came over and he picked, he picked this up. Uh, and he said, I need to test it. And I thought, that's interesting. And he took it away and he dripped a couple of drips onto what looked like a piece of litmus paper. That's what it looked like. It was at a bit of a distance. And um, he immediately held it up to the light, came back to me, said, here you go, sir. Thank you very much. So that's the first time I've actually had any interest in that whatsoever. What they were thought it might be, what they were testing for, I really don't know. Um, liquid explosive. When, when, when we went through to Lanzarote last year, um, I had what I thought was a 100 ml bottle of juice with me. You know what I'm like. And uh, the girl said, is this a 100 ml bottle, sir? I said, yes. Oh, OK. She said, you do know you're supposed to use a bag of this size, holding one up that you could have bought from a, sh a machine further out in the corridor. And I said, no, we didn't. But it's a clear plastic saleable bag. Is that all right? She said, yeah, yeah, we'll let you through this, but you need the right size bag next time. And it okay. wasn't until wasn't until we uh, got through all of that little lot and went to sat down. I had a look at the bottle. It was, in fact, a 150 milliliter <laughs> bottle. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. But it only had 100 mils in. I, I, I One of Ish. the worst stories I've ever seen, or one of the worst things I've ever seen, was a little old lady, and they diverted my bag. Because they do it, uh, you know, every fifth bag or something gets diverted. And they're very, uh, the, what's very common these days is they swab the bag with a piece of tissue and then they go and put it into this big... Looks like a GCMS type machine to yeah. see if there's any traces of explosives, that kind of thing, yeah. Um, but there was a little old lady and her, and her husband, and I, and I mean old. They, they were maybe their 80s, more likely than 90s. They were having trouble walking. And she got a bottle of quite expensive perfume, and it was only half full. And they said, you can't take that on the plane. Mm. And she was heartbroken. She was in tears. And she was saying, but it's only half full. And they're saying, yeah, but... And and uh, my partner Fiona, she's had. She, I remember her taking a two hundred mil shampoo bottle on, and saying it's only half full. And you can't do that. You're not allowed. So you were quite lucky there. Yeah. Well, I think it was only because it was pretty difficult to tell what size it was. And I, I assured her it was a hundred mils, and she took us at my word. Mind you, any single lads near Newcastle, you really probably need to be dating that girl. <laughs> On the subject of egos, very good one, Dave. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, uh, to answer the question that was put then, yeah, it does need to be in a resellable bag. I've been questioned a couple of times about, is this bag all right? And I said, why? It fits all the criteria. You know, it's clear, you can see what's in it, it's resellable. If, if I thought it was going to leak, I wouldn't put it in there, would I? Duh. And they go, yeah, okay, <laughs> normally. So, uh, but once I've been asked, and nobody asked me what it was, which I found was strange since they tested it. You'd have thought he would have said, what is it? Because, yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, the bottle I got from Cloud9 Vaping. And they're great, these bottles. You put the little orange top on it when, uh, when you're transporting it and the green nozzle on, and then you don't need to carry a syringe or anything like that with you if you've got something that needs a syringe to fit. So, brilliant. So, there you go. Well, that, that Dave, is what I do. Yes, it, it, it's it's very uh, very similar to what 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 we do going off to uh, to Lanzarote. Um, the only the only area of concern I've got is that I'm doing hand baggage only across to Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to keep it down. Um, and literally, I mean, the whole lot's going to get fitted into a kind of a, a foldy up case thing, so that'll just get laid out. Um, and it's only three days, so I'll be all right with 
about 120 mils of juice, I think. Yeah. But well, I'll, I'll you, have to do it in 100. Uh, well, the one bit of advice I would give, right, is always take far more juice than you need. It's yes. cheap, right? <laughs> you know, uh, it doesn't... And, and precisely, uh, the, 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 the thing that worries me is I would always divide it into several containers. Because yes. if one does split, you're kind of screwed. There are vape shops, apparently, in Switzerland. I, I haven't seen one yet, but there's bound to be one in Basel. Uh, but, um, you know, spread it around a bit is my advice. If something does get nabbed or falls apart or leaks, you've got cover then. Yes. But, but uh, legally, the only thing you've really got to watch for, I think, is the country you're flying into. Now... Apparently in Turkey they're not too happy about these things, are they? I've been there, never, nobody batted an eyelid. I was extremely worried about that one because that place they X-ray everything as you go in to the airport. So before you check in, you have to put all your luggage through X-ray machines in Turkish airports. And I'd heard this and I was extremely nervous about it, but nobody batted an eyelid. Nobody gave a damn. I'll so, just remember to take the sea Alice before I go in then. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> how do you follow that? <laughs> Actually, there's a clever answer to that, but I'm not going there. No. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so that really is all you do. So, what we haven't covered is what you're going to use on the plane. Assuming that you have, A, cleared it with your airline and they're happy for you to vape on the aircraft, or B, don't care about any of that and are just going to do it anyway. <laughs> what works and what doesn't should have done a jingle there shouldn't I what so, works dun, dun, and what dun. doesn't what works and what doesn't what <laughs> works and what doesn't that'll do nicely I think ok so Dave what are you planning on taking what for using on the plane yeah I'm going to take this um, this is this uh Desire by kick. It 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 kind of fits in my hand because I've got fairly big hands. Yeah. It's um, it's okay, uh, vapor wise. What I don't, I mean seriously. I, if if I was to sit on it with the uh, the TNS, there's no chance that I could stealth with this. There's just not a hope in hell. Um, I can I can stealth with the desire, and I'll probably take my sub 10 pound all set up job that i got from jay's the corner shop up the top of the road because that <laughs> will work quite nicely i should be sticking some uh, 54 milligram juice in it so that i will not need to use it and i'm sorry i've just said just seen what morning star put into chat who said isn't the whole idea with cialis that you take it before you go in dd <laughs> yes, exactly right. I'm, no, I'll probably be uh, sitting with something like that. and uh... Right, OK. I've got a comment to make on that, but just before that, I just want to uh, read out a comment that just went past in chat from Olaf Hauk there. And he said, beware, in Switzerland you can buy juice, but zero nicotine. Now, I am not. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, uh, I know a few people in Switzerland that vape, and it certainly ain't zero nicotine, but I don't know where they're getting their juice from. I stress. I know that uh, e-cigs are being openly sold in the tobacconist in the town where I'm working. And they're selling nicotine juice, so I'm not sure whether they're just being naughty uh, or whether uh, it's allowed. I don't know. But that kind of illustrates my point. You know, check the laws on the place you're going to. Uh, let's face it, there's vapours in every country, whether it's illegal or not. And you can no they've normally got a forum. <laughs> so it's easy enough to get advice about what you're going to do when you when you get there i think so but uh that, that's all i can really add to that is uh, i wasn't aware of any sort of limitation on uh nicotine liquids in switzerland but there you go anyway uh, svp stream's gone south by the way Diff. has it yeah but let's just carry on yeah i'm just refreshing now yeah, now we're back. The same? Not, yeah, it's back. You can, they've normally got a forum. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So and the advice, advice is going about you. what you're going to do when you when you. Yeah, it's back. Okay, excellent. Right, so uh, yeah, so you were on about. I don't, I've no idea how that thing that's hanging out your gob is going to perform. Uh, it's a disposable, you say. It is, yes. Well, my guess would be that's going to be pretty close to sealed. Because you can't top it up. No, 
No, you, well, I mean, I can get the tip out of it, but uh, it's 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 a one-piece unit, so that that'll probably do the job for going over. Um, and just to really put fear into everybody, it's the menthol one. <laughs> Uh, the other thing you had there, the sort of uh, clearomizer kind of thing. Yes. That will probably be empty by the time you land. It'll be empty before I take off. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, if you, I don't mean when you vaped it. Right. You'll find you'll find two really annoying things with that style of clearomizer. Uh, one is that when the air pressure, as soon as they close the door and they pressurize the cabin. Uh, you will find two things. One is that you can hardly get any vapour out of it. Um, and it's uh, really quite annoying. You'll get so If the juice is strong enough, you'll get some sensation of throat hit, but the stealthing takes care of itself. Uh, Indeed. Something to do with the air pressure. Uh, it just doesn't like to vape. Um, the other thing you'll find is that during the course of the flight, it will slowly empty itself. Because they just don't seem to work that well. Um, I said I'd mention what I've been using, uh, so I'll do that. I'll tell you what, we'll take it. We'll take our second break because that's a, just about the right time, and then we'll come back and look at that. So okay. uh, we'll see you in a minute and a half ish. of Dave's Tackle Box. Iveber and Iveber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iveber.co.uk and iveber-alexa.co.uk. Iveber and iveber-alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of vapertrails.tv. And welcome back. And uh, I, I can see from chat there that there's uh, there's been a couple of questions, including one very pertinent question about what uh, what was the question, Dave? If you unscrew, if you unscrew the, the clay top, and yeah. let it repressurize it, cabin pressure, what would happen then? Right. Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. I think I think most e-liquids expand under that pressure. <laughs> Is what I think. Uh, I think that's why they then try and find a way to leak out. So I suspect it probably wouldn't make much difference. But I've never tried that for the simple reason that it would be quite hard to do that without the guy sitting next to you knowing exactly what you're up to. I don't know. Have you got anything? Any thoughts on that, Dave? I'm, I'm trying to work it out because I don't know whether the pressure is higher or lower in, in the cabin than it is at, at sea level. Um, I think it's higher. Well, if it's higher, that should push the juice back in rather than the other way around because any air that was in there would be trapped. Yeah. Um, if it, it's, it must be... I'm going to have to... I'll have to see what happens, actually, on Wednesday. I'll try this out. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's an interesting thought because I'll... I'll and, and it's a nice leading to what I was going to look at next, which is... right. I tried... Oh, let me just move my beer out of the way. <laughs> bad beer, bad beer. Right. Um, bad, naughty beer. Up until uh, very recently, like last week, I've been using these Evods. 
Because what I was finding was, um, you know, it's all right using something like the Ellipse with that little tank. Those things didn't leak too badly at all, just because of the way the tank fits neatly over the atomizer. And then the cap actually acts, uh, it catches any juice that leaks. So basically, uh, once they open the, the, the cabin door again, you could just kind of blow it through and uh and it would be fine but like that you know you can use that with that really strong juice or anything but you get no real sensation of flavor or anything like that it's 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 you know it doesn't give you such a nice vaping experience or something like this evod and i found these evods i've been using these for about a year i would say probably since just about the time they came out i would think because they do leak a little bit uh, and what i'll find is if, if one's full right i'll fill one up before I go to bed tonight and leave it on my desk, probably just about exactly where it is there. And then when I leave for the airport in the morning, I'll grab it and put it in my pocket. So it's not far off full by the time I'm on the plane. And um, what I find tends to happen is they get a bit gurgly and you get, in fact, you can actually see this one. If I hold it in that direction, you can see there's a little bit of juice around the top of the battery. Um, now that in itself is not a major problem because you carry a piece of tissue, you wipe that out do that uh, sort of blow this through like that give a little wipe and that's it you're good to go as soon as you get off the plane however uh, what I found is that once you've done that a couple of times it stresses some seal or o-ring or something inside and they're never quite the same again so basically flying with these things is killing them off a lot faster than if you're using them at home, for example. So they haven't been ideal. But I mentioned before that when you actually try and vape them on the plane, it's very hard to get any vapor. Uh, it's uh, you have to like sort of you know you hold the, the button down till it times out to get any sensation of throat. It's good enough, but it's not great. Um, and uh, and it'll shorten the life of the evod itself. And it's not just the coil. It's the actual uh, thing itself. So uh, it's, I found a better option, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, and uh, before I tell you what it is, I'll go to Dave for comments. So there we go, if I just flash that back up. So yeah, so what what have you been using last time you flew? Um, it was an EVOD, strangely enough. Yeah, and how did you find it? Um, I kept it mouthpiece down in my shirt pocket. Right. Um, stealthed it. I mean, it was a four-hour flight, um, but I've got to, got to freely admit I had 45 milligram juice in it, and I preloaded like it couldn't before I got on the plane. So I was, I was just on the verge of nausea before I got on the plane because I know what they can be like. Um, and that, that got me probably an hour and a half to two hours into the flight before I decided to have a drag. And I was stealthing it. Now, what I should point out is that I won't say which flight I was on just in case they're watching, but the air stewardess, or one of the stewardesses, well, two of them actually, were sat directly opposite Jill and I because we always get the, uh, the the emergency exit seat. Right. And it was fine. Um, it wasn't completely unnoticeable, though, because as we got to the end of the flight, I said, thank you very much. It's been a lovely flight. She said, uh, Yes, did you enjoy your vaping? I said, oh, you saw, did you? She said, yes, but I'm not going to say anything about it. Be sure nobody sees you on the way back. And that was that. Right, OK. So, so it must have been putting something out, but I kept it upside down on the basis that the, the top um, is properly sealed. It, wouldn't, it, it, it didn't come off. Right. And, of course, the juice couldn't get out of the, because I think what's happening is it's coming through the wick and dripping down the air hole because of that inverse pressure or reverse pressure or whatever's going on. Right. So by keeping it upside down in my pocket, I got no leaks at all. And when I turned it the right way up, the drag was pretty good and the vapour was pretty good because the coil wasn't super saturated. Right, okay. That, that, that sounds like a fair philosophy. Um, I would... Just, just notice on this, this one that I just pulled out of my bag, which was my spare one, right? I periodically, it doesn't get used, it's a spare, okay? So the battery's supposedly fully charged, and the EVOD itself is full. 
uh, it's not the EVOD is empty it's not being used and it's emptied itself entirely and that's just through taking it on the plane mm. which probably means the little pen holder thing in the bag that it was in is covered in juice <laughs> probably which I, is fine I, I, as, I, <laughs> I, as I say I mean I, I cannot see how any juice could get out if you've got it I mean I don't know whether whether folks will be able to see on camera they will if I make it full screen there you go Poss possibly or possibly not you'll see the juice yeah you'll see the centre tube and it's not high enough for to be able to, to push it out um, so it can't get out of, of the only place it comes out which as you've seen is down at the bottom of the uh, I just have one itself. comment to make, Dave, and that's yep. not an EVOD. No, this is an Aspire, but it's a similar setup. <laughs> it's a similar setup, but this is where I'm being building up to. This is where I'm going. Do you remember uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago in the show, I got sent this thing called the MV setup, and it's got an Aspire. Ah, uh, yes. What I now know is an Aspire BDC, but I didn't know that at the time. They just told me it was an Aspire cartomizer, and... Uh, uh, I decided, right, I didn't want to take that one on the plane because I think that with the with the glass, I'll just uh, take it full screen. I think with the glass on the cartomizer, I think that would attract attention. Awkward questions, and I'm all for a quiet life, especially at, like, stupid o'clock on a Monday morning. So, but uh, I, th I, I just had a feeling, because these things just don't leak, I'm finding. Mm. They're... Compared to the EVOD, they seem to be built a lot more solidly. They're a bit bigger and clunkier. Not much, but a bit bigger and clunkier. If I uh, line the bases of the two up, you can see that it is bigger. So, from that point of view, it's a little bit more tricky to be stealthy with it. But uh, I was, I decided I liked that one, so I went looking for some more, and uh, uh, I actually went to Safer Sig site. And got these BDCs, and this this even looks a bit like an Evon, doesn't it? This is like the one you had. Yes. And I just uh, I'll hold it up to your camera so you can see. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I decided, I know, I'll take it on the plane, and I did, and I had no issues with leaks whatsoever in either direction. So twice now I've taken this on the plane, and it's been absolutely bone dry when I've gone off. I've lost no juice. And, for some reason, Dave, uh, when you actually vape it on the plane, it worked a bit better. Yes. It actually... I, th I, I think a lot of it is, if, if you've got juice coming out, it's coming out via the coil and the wicks, if it's leaking out, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and therefore, you're getting way, way, way too much juice to the coil, and that's why it's not producing much. M my theory with the EVOD is that it's actually coming... Uh, you know when you uh, take the base off, where the, where the coil screws in, mm -hmm. there's a little washer at the bottom of the thread, and I think there it's is. been forced out where the base meets the thread. And uh, I'll just flick the camera and go full screen with that. Oh, my God, I've got juice on my finger. Oh, no, you'll die! <laughs> Here we go. Don't die. <laughs> Please don't die. Lick it's it it's okay, I've licked it off. Um, right, oops, that fell over. Uh, this is an EVOD, and I've just taken the base off. And this is the one that's like been, it hasn't been opened probably for a couple of weeks at least. And you can see there's juice actually running down the outside of it now, where I've just undone it. And if I'm not sure if you can actually pick it up on this camera or not, but the bottom of the threaded part, there's like a, a silicon O ring, I suppose would be one description for it. A silicon seal, and I think it's that that fails. Because for a while I thought, okay, if I just replace the cut, because they wimp off and they don't work so well after you've flown with them a few times. And I thought, um, you know, I'll change the coil more often. So I was changing the coil, like, you know, sort of every week on two of them, you know, which is probably quite a few to be getting through. Mm. And uh, um, but what I actually think is happening is that seal is failing. So actually you have to buy a new EVOD, not just a coil. Or you could probably replace that. Thing if you could be bothered to faff around I mean to be honest with you if you had to buy a new one every week it's not the end of the world is it what are they a fiver something like but, that uh, <laughs> you know, um, so whatever the cause for it is I've just found that the Aspire seems to work a lot better so I'm I noticed 
I'm a big fan of the Aspires. I like them. I've they become well. a big fan. I've become a big fan. Because what I do, I mean, because it's too much hassle to strip down a rebuildable like a Genesis or, uh, or you know, one thing I've been using a lot at home lately is the Cave & Light mm-hmm. with me cotton wick. Really? Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, it's not a very good cotton wick. It's not a very good coil either, but it works. And I'm just so lazy these days. I can't be bothered to fart around and make it better. So I just use it, you know. Uh, at some point, I'll think, oh, I've had enough of that. And then I'll uh, go back to a Genesis or something and, or whatever I do. But um, to take that with me, I'd have to do what you were describing earlier. Totally drain it and probably clean it up. You know, probably put a fresh wick and coil and everything on it so it doesn't make a mess in the suitcase. Yeah. Uh, or carrying on or whatever. And I'd have to do that every Sunday night and every probably Wednesday night. That sounds like too much of a class. That sounds like way too much hassle. And what I'm finding with the Aspire, though, is if I stick that on the MVP and crank it up, I don't know, five volts is plenty for me, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it gives you a perfectly satisfactory vote uh, on the Ego Twist or the uh, or, the, or that, that, that DSL thing. Mm-hmm. SLB thing, even. DSL. Where, oh, where did that come from, man? Got no <laughs> idea. <laughs> oh, dear. What a TWAT. Eh? Um, and uh, I find that that's actually more than good enough because it's only three nights a week I'm away. If, if I was going on holiday, I, I, you know, uh, when we went to Malaysia, I did, I took a few rebuildables with me because I thought I'm there for a couple of weeks. It's worth setting it up. Mm. You know? And uh, but but like for short trips, that's what I do. So, uh, yes, I noticed. No that... idea. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, the, uh, the stream went the shit again. Yes, mine's frozen a little bit as well. Yeah. So thank, look, it seems thank... that some people can see us, and some can't. And when they all refresh the page, they get a five hundred server error, which is always nice. Mm. So uh, that would be our website, giving you that. But hey, hey. We shall persevere the way that we do. We're nearly at the end, actually. We are. So, but anyway, yes, I've become, a, I've become an Aspire fan in the last few weeks. And uh, I, I know they're not new, but they're new to me. So I actually went and bought one of these David things. They're nice. And me, I haven't tried it yet at all. This is, I think this is a mini. Yeah, a David mini this is. Because I thought it was more like ego-sized, which it seems yes. to be. And uh, I haven't set it up or anything yet. I may very well put that in my suitcase and take it with me. I has one here, and I think I will probably take that to uh, Swiss. Yeah, why not? Because, uh, you know, I'm meeting somebody in Basel on uh, Wednesday night, so... Yeah. I don't want to be underdressed, so to speak. So. No, no, not at all, not at all. I'll have the TNS with me, as you do. Hmm. And why not? Uh, I think, uh, yes, I just wanted to mention that Olaf uh, Hauk there pointed out and he's in switzerland and he's saying it is actually naughty to sell nicotine liquids uh, oh you're allowed dear. to import it but you're not allowed to sell it so uh fair so, enough and he will I'll, know I'll better than you. i because i just do what i want i don't yeah. actually check out these things as well as i should <laughs> alan fletcher has said dd what about cigar lakes on the plane easy answer no <laughs> never <laughs> Look, um, I, I can tell you, uh, do you remember the little um, E-Mini? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had the uh, the Avali thing, which they called, what did they call it, Dave? The E-Roll, um, what did they call that? Uh, can't remember now. I've got one here, if I can actually part it from the tin that it's sitting in. Here we go. Uh, the Avali name was the E-Mini. Yes. And uh, the Joytech name was the E-Roll, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yes. And it's got the little PCC personal charger case. I have used one of these with 45 milligram juice. Uh, they're okay. Uh, I found as the same with the Avali Ellipse, where you've got the same uh, atomizer with the spike and the tank if the if if you change the tank regularly so uh you know because they eventually do wear down a bit from from taking them off and filling them up but when those tanks are new they make a really good seal around the atomizer and they're actually not bad as far as yes. working goes uh but if you're going to use something like that you don't want anything less than 45 milligram by extra in it definitely not so, uh alan fletch has just posted his follow-up question do the cigar lakes leak um I'm not in a position to be able to tell you because I have not taken a cigar lake 
on an aeroplane with me, that's the quick way to get your ass kicked. Um, I suspect that a, a, a disposable would be fine. As for the rest, who knows? They don't hold enough juice to make anything of a mess if they do leak anyway. So For a long time, I used those really big uh, dual-coil foam-filled cartomizers. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the ones? Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they worked pretty well, uh, but they... All of the manufacturers of those, uh, they all went through some kind of design change and started using a different filler. Yeah. It used to be like a, a wall, didn't it? Uh, mm. And then they started using a foam. The wall holds onto the juice really well. They work really well on the plane, but, you know, <laughs> after a while, all I had left was these foam ones, and basically, first, as soon as I close the cabin door, pff, it pees itself. Indeed. So, uh, but but as a general rule, those those old sort of wall filled cartomizers they work really really well because they actively top, kind of hold on to the juice they do yeah Alan's saying but you can hide them in your hand better to stealth yeah you can but they just they don't cut it for me they don't produce enough for me um, this is about as small as I'll go I think um, and well I use the ellipse which is not big uh, lengthwise it's not much bigger than a single like but, mm. it's got, but the battery was a 280 milliamp hour was it might have been a bit more Two. something along those lines yeah. i think so so uh and with the uh i mean you, you know you can lose that in your hand and the best thing about that is it doesn't look like an e -cig. even now people don't recognize it they think they're usb sticks yeah so i used to leave mine less la resting like next to my laptop well, that's, that's what i'm thinking it. about this this desire by exactly kick. Uh, somebody pointed out it looks more like a mascara than anything else and, exactly hey, I'll, be, I'll be wearing pink i don't <laughs> care uh, uh, what well, time's up do you i know i was just going to say with the uh charging case for the ellipse something like that i think that's probably a better bit than the single like myself mm. that's what i think i cannot believe that we've uh blown the whole hour on that we have and we had so much more planned we did but it'll be there next week. It will. So we'll use it then. But until then, uh, can I say thanks very much, Dave? You can indeed. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Um, let's get off the air. <laughs> Good night, everybody. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.